Hi, I'm Stephen Bruce. I run the Academy of Physical Medicine and here's 45 minutes of free CPD for you. This is just an example of what we do. We run a free session every month along with 70 plus hours of live learning with others CPD every year. If you'd like to see more, click the link in the info section below the video and that'll take you through to our website. Enjoy. Welcome to the Academy of Physical Medicine. I'm Stephen Bruce, and I confess that I'm a little bit nervous about talking about today's CPD topic. The reason for that is, of course, I'm an osteopath, and we osteopaths are brought up to be very cynical and sceptical about the whole idea of instrument-assisted manipulation and other aspects which we think are just not done in our osteopathic field. However, I've resigned, my, resigned myself, resolved myself to think that we need to keep open minds about this and we need to understand how these things work. And actually, what we're going to talk about today is probably better research than almost anything other than spinal manipulation itself. Of course, if you're a chiropractor, you've almost certainly received training in instrument-assisted instrument manipulation. Um, but I'm joined by somebody today who has a lot more experience in that topic than most of us. Uh, his name is Julian Barker. He is a, ch a chiropractor, a McTimony chiropractor, and he is an expert in the activator instrument. Julian, great to have you with us. Hi, yes. Thank you, Stephen. Really good to be here. I'm really looking forward to this. Did I, did I sum you up uh, correctly there by saying that you're an expert in the activator? Um, I've been doing it over 15 years now. It is the main method in, that we use within the clinic. Um, I just... Um, um, it, it is. It is what I adjust all my uh, uh, my clients with. It is also what I adjust my family at home with. Um, and um, recently, I've actually been part of a team that's actually teaching it. Um, and I was part of a cohort of uh, four chiropractors that were invited uh, in 2017 to Phoenix in Arizona to the 50 year celebration of Activator Central. And so, yes. I am as deep in activator as you could possibly get, I think. Good. I'm glad to hear that. And um, I hope you don't mind me sort of airing my own um, ingrained reservations about the, the activator. It's nothing to do with the activator itself. It's just that, as I said, I, mean, I think all osteopaths are brought up to believe, no, we don't, we don't do that. It can't possibly be as good as what we can feel and do with our hands. But actually, I'm beginning to think that we still like to preserve our hands for the rest of our careers, if we possibly can. Uh, and there is a lot of evidence. There is yeah, a reasonable body of evidence behind the activator. It's not, of course, the only instrument to assist technique, is it? No, definitely, definitely not. Um, the I think the scepticism about act uh, adjustment uh, uh, instrument adjusting also exists within the uh, chiropractic. So, you know, uh, you're not alone on that front. Um, and yes, in terms of so, I, probably my my story in is quite a useful one at this point. Is uh, as a McTimony, um in made my first three years, three four years of, of clinical practice, like a lot of. Um, recent graduates whatever technique you did is the only pure and true way and everything else is heresy um something along those um, yeah. and i got to the point where um, i was having a lot of problems with my i'm left-handed with my dominant left hand um in in college when i was at college they were doing tests on how fast you could do a talk toggle recall that was one of the research projects and uh, uh, can i interrupt there because um mm. there may be osteopaths who don't know what that is i don't know but that is a yeah. very high speed adjustment just peculiar to mctimony chiropractors i believe uh, absolutely it's a it's a high speed uh, thrust and rotation adjustment um and um, that has a very specific hand position. It's it's like you, you're adjusting with the piziform, if you can see my hand there. Uh, and it's a, it's a twist, thrust, and rotation done done at very high speed. And when we were testing in uh, in college, um, I, I was the fastest. I my uh, my trusty left, my right was pretty good, but my left hand was faster than anybody else. So the actual speed of adjustment, which was um, is is important, um, was really good. However. Three, four years into practice, um, I'm developing problems with my wrist. And it's not that I'm osteoporotic, I was 30 or, or osteoarthritic at all. Um, it was that I was just unfortunate, like a um, uh, percentage of the population at the time, the ultrasound uh, 
uh, person said 60% that have a ganglion between their scaphoid and lunate. And, and, and I quote, she said, it's not really an issue unless you're a professional boxer or a chiropractor. And I said, <laughs> well, I don't box. Mm, However, yeah. so, so I, I, I tried lots and lots of different things. Lots of, I tried rest. I tried all kinds of modalities. It, it, it just, and, and the, there was a stark choice, quit or do something different. And uh, as the, the phrase about, you know, the, it's only when the, um, the pain of change is, uh, is less than the, the pain of staying the same that you, you make a decision. Yeah. And uh, a very good friend of mine who I was actually talking to a couple of weeks ago and reminding him of this life-changing intervention that he had no memory of. How many times has that happened? Um, uh, he, said, he said, well, look at Activator. And at the time in the UK, they were doing two seminars uh, a, uh, a year, so on a six-month rotation. And I went along and I was intimidated and impressed at the same time because the the it wasn't necessarily the tool. And this is probably, if there's any one thing I want to get across today, is that Activator is an assessment method more mm -hmm. than it is a tool. Yes. So have I on camping holidays used the assessment method and not had the activator tool and reverted to using my hands? A absolutely, I have. Um, the tool is just a very, very efficient way of delivering the required thrust. So the thing with the activator people, and this is the, actually the, the teaching I was asked to present this, was it was the research. The research, the research, the research. They have um, currently 23 clinical trials. And one of the great things about the uh, having a, a tool in the protocol is you can very accurately use a placebo uh, and they build. Um, I have my activator here. Here is my activator five, uh, one of them. I've got a few. The uh, the previous the previous model of that looked a little less like a, a Star Wars ray gun, didn't it? It was a bit more of a <laughs> sort of yeah, a, it did. A, so, so, so the pre yeah I, I, yes um, the previous model was a spring loaded uh, device, um, and there was a, I can talk about that now, or I can just deviate off into the point being is, is with the tool with either of those models, you can build one that looks and feels the same but doesn't actually deliver the thrust and right. you can then you can then blind your uh, your participants um be it be it the the doctor or, or or the patient and so you can end up with double blind placebo trials which manual therapy of all descriptions has always struggled with because yeah. how, you know even in the acupuncture world how do you fake sticking a needle into somebody it's very tricky mm -hmm. um but so so and huge amounts of research and research both based on. So if I, if I just rattle some off that I was teaching the other day, there is um, there are demonstrations of obviously safety was a, as an important one, but also of efficacy. Um, there have been animal trials as well in terms of um, inflammatory response. There have been animal stud model studies for uh, uh, osteoporosis um, and then lots and lots and lots of studies about um, do does it move the bone does it move the bone is the mechanoreception stimulation actually happening and by how much and then comparison trials between activator adjustments and um, what in my world would be di diversified or uh, lumbar roll adjustments. Can I, can I just take you back to what you said at the beginning there? Yeah. I'd, like to have a, I'd like to have a closer look at the instrument itself at some mm. point. But mm. um, I have always made an assessment or made an, ass an assumption that uh, using a tool like this, because you can adjust the force very accurately and so yeah. on, um, would be safer than a manually delivered thrust. And yet these were banned in Saskatchewan in 2004 on safety grounds. Yeah, I have to say that's news to me. Um, that's probably a, um, activated central is probably a, a question. I, I really don't, I, I don't know why. I, in terms of safety, that is one of the absolute yeah. biggest things. Um, in terms of, uh, as far as I know, Activator have done trials on all, all kinds of things from, you know, could you break a bone? Um, what kind of joint movement do you do? Could you cause any damage? And, and whether the, um, it was the University of Maryland, I think, and the, um, uh, and, and the funding through the National Institute of Health uh, in the States. And they went to the guy and the name, 
eludes me at the moment, but he's the guy who, who developed um, um, ultrasound um, breaking up for kidney stones. So, right. so in terms of a, a, a forced pulse, th- this, this was the guy that, that knew what he was talking about. And he did all the, the studies on um, tissue types and different tissue types and how much actually movement you get through the joint. And also, significantly, if you're, is how much movement you get above and below any particular section. So if you're adjusting for the sake of discussion, um, um, T12 or L1, you will get movement um, at least three above and below. So you're now getting an adjustment down into the lumbar and, and above. So you get a whole chain of movement from a single thrust. Uh, and that that is, I, I have to say, that comes up, it's probably come up three times this morning in clinic where I will identify through the protocol, which is the point of it um i will adjust a need for uh, i'll identify a need to adjust say number four and number five i will adjust number four usually go to the higher one because of the homologous linkage within the neural chain and then go back and check the five and if it's cleared and uh, there's no now demonstrable need to adjust there leave them alone the advantage for me, and I had, I had two go either way this morning, one, one that did and one that didn't. So the one that did clear the five, the L5, in chiropractic speak, I, I can say to that client, this is going to settle down really quickly. You're going to feel relief really quickly and, you, and you're going to be fine. Where I needed to adjust a lumbar five after a four, I know that they're going to be a bit sore and they are going to, they're going to be aware of that change for a day or two. Um, so, it, and, and, and of course, Clients always like if you if you tell them what's going to happen in advance of it happening, yeah. it, it can only ever be a positive outcome. Um, yeah. And um, if I if I'm in a situation where I adjust a lumbar four on the left and a lumbar five on the right, I know that they are definitely going to be sore for a couple of days. Um, but it's going to but it's going to feel sore in a different way. It's going to ease their symptoms. And and also the other thing to say is is. All, if for, for new clients, once we've assessed them and put together a report of findings and put together a course of care, that course of care for me is uh, is going to be anywhere between two and five, maybe six months minimum, because yep. the majority of clients that we see are um, chronic long term cases. And we've had a, a very, very informative discussion with um, one of your chiropractic colleagues on the benefits of maintenance treatment in the past. That's that's in our library, so if people want to watch yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, sure. And yeah. I guess uh, I've talked to other McTimony chiropractors particularly, but I think your your world and my osteopathic world are brought up to share that idea that we see a patient and we, we, we hesitate to give them long-term plans. We like to say, well, we'll see how you are next time. And we try and stop seeing them after three appointments. Yeah. Yet, and yet the theory, the, the evidence for maintenance care is that for the chronic patients, they probably are going to need a lot more than that. Let's Absolutely. leave that one aside because we've covered it. Um, Heidi Harvick just... is the lady to speak to about that in, uh, in New Zealand. She sure. is the head of research in the New Zealand uh, chiropractic school um, okay. and uh, her MRI studies on uh, on wellness care are amazing. Yeah. Let me just do one one final thing on, on the issue of safety with this. Um, mm. for, uh, two things. First is to try to reassure the osteopaths. I made one comment about the activator being banned in Saskatchewan in 2004 It isn't banned any longer, as far as I'm aware, and I suspect that that was purely suspicion on the part of the medical world that they didn't have the evidence that it was safe that led to that ban. Um, And I don't know the answer to that. It is permissible in Australia, America, Canada, the UK, and everywhere else that chiropractic is practiced, as far as I know. And Europe. And one of the... And Europe, so... With, yeah. with, uh, what I would say of that is the activator five, so the tool that I've been waving here, um, when it was released in the States, the National Institutes of Health had they one, one question was, is it safe? And they went through the procedure. And the procedure is effectively bring your evidence to a court of law and, and run it through. When it came into Europe and the CE mark, which is um, now yep. post Brexit, is somewhat defunct, but uh, the CE mark was two questions um, Is it safe and does it work? Turn up with your evidence. And that took them two years of 18 to 18 months to two years to go mm. through that legal procedure of 
of um, proving that it is safe and uh, and efficient within a legal framework to right. to gain the mark. So, yeah. So the the the, the thing you mentioned, which a I didn't know, I, I know that um, one of the things that is whenever I go to an activator seminar is. Um, is, uh, is is all about the data. It's all about the data, and yeah. the data is is incredibly thorough. Sure. Um, however, well, go on. The, your your the, next question, Stephen. The second of my questions was: uh, I suspect that many people might be thinking, "Well, what about the the elderly, brittle boned, osteoporotic patient?" Um, here oh. we are, effectively delivering a punch to a bone. That's how I right. would envisage it. Oh, um, this is, is it my safe? favorite topic. Good. My favorite topic. And the answer is, so, so Activator was originally designed, as the Americans would say, for, for senior population. And they found it was so effective that they, it, it, it ran the way through. Um, study done at the in, in, I believe, Spain University of Barcelona a couple of years ago now, not that many years ago, looking at what effect did it have. Now, you can breed, within medical research, they use osteoporotic rats, genetically modified rats that have osteoporosis. Um, at the time, I think she said about $10,000 per rat. Long story short, what they found is in um, hip and knee joints, and then the study was then reproduced as well on rabbits, that there was a reading of tubercular bone directly over the site where the uh, activator thrust was used. And they delved into the mechanism, and it's to do with muscle growth factor causing a thickening of bone. So it is exactly the opposite of what you might think. Actually, the activator method is has a, an evidence base that, that uh, in animal model studies that suggests it can be used as part of a uh, as a as a treatment for osteoporosis. So um, and I can change turn the setting force down. It has four uh, four settings. I, I can be cautious and, and, and turn it right down to the setting that I would quite happily use and have done on um, uh, babies and neonates. Um, and get get good results. And I've I've I have I've had clients come back to me and said after long you know long periods of time their DEXA scores are remaining the same or slightly improving. Nothing massive, and that is just that is an mm -hmm. anecdotal observation in clinic. Um, but yeah, um, it's uh, and once explained, um, yeah, I'm quite happy to adjust um, osteoporotic um, patients. Whereas to be honest, actually even with McTimony, I, I wouldn't have been quite so confident to do it. Yeah. What do you, you just talked there about once it's been explained? I mean, do you have a, a specific consenting protocol for using this on patients? I don't know whether patients Absolutely. are more reassured by the sight of a machine or more worried about the sight of a machine. Um, well, yeah, indeed. Uh, we get into um, into the psychology of, uh, of explaining care of any description. So indeed. our protocol is, is if we're talking about uh, new, new clients, as we call them in there, um, once we've shown them around the building and there's uh, this um, and they've provided a history form and all that kind of information, we sit down down with what we call an orientation video, which um, is a it's like a do it's three minutes and thirty six seconds long, and it goes through and it shows them the activator and and some explanation of where it comes from. Um, I think in the twelve years that we've been doing that, I could count on three fingers the people that go. Actually, I just want somebody to crack me. This is not for me. And off they go. So, so a three out of, of probably several, well, probably thousands to be honest. Um, <clears throat> I would say the actually, and this is getting into treatment management, is is that uh, clients that turn up in any situation like this, whether it's chiropractors, osteopaths, physiotherapists, acupuncturists, massages, or probably even GPs have only two questions in their mind and those two questions and there, there's a, I, I will give the nod to Steve Davison who taught me this is a chiropractor in my world is they only have two questions one do I trust you two do you have the solution to the problem I'm presenting with beyond that trust me they do not care what you do yeah indeed um you mentioned all the studies, and uh, I, we need to get on to activate a technique rather than the instrument yeah, sure. itself. But uh, mm -hmm. in those studies, I, what seemed to be quite clear to me was that the activator itself has not demonstrated any significant benefit in treatment outcomes over ordinary manual chiropractic. I think that's a fair comment. Yeah, I think so. Uh, and However, the, the benefit is in to you, the practitioner, in many ways. Um, I, I think that is also fair, indeed. Mm. Um, I 
have uh, well twenty odd years now uh, of practice, Stephen, uh, you you get a level of clinical experience which I would like uh, to take into my. Um, into my later decades and I feel confident that um, I could physically actually adjust into my 70s and 80s should I want to and and by the time I've been doing this for 50 years um, I already know I know enough to know I know nothing Um, and uh, to actually and and when I see a um, and I have it, it, a, a, 20, a twenty stone bodybuilder rugby player. You know, I, I love it. I live in, in farming and, and rugby world here. Um, I have a twenty stone, you know, tight head prop comes in with lower back issues. Um, does not phase me at all because the the actual physicality to me is no more than um, than uh, uh, mm. the. Uh, a lady, a, a seven and a half stone osteoporotic lady. I ch- the, the protocol is going to be the same, exactly the same, uh, and I may change the setting ons at all. But actually, the outcome, and of course, uh, we, we very much, I'm very much of a, uh, we, we reassess every eight visits and I feed back and I, and I, I measure, 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 measure. I'm, um, um, before being a chiropractic, I, my, a chiropractor, my first degree was uh, um, applied biology. So, so I'm a scientist. Yeah. And that's important. So, but let us move on to methodology. Well, yes, and we've had a question already come in from someone who calls himself 005.6. Uh, and, I, and I wanted to point out Activator is not just about the instruments, is it? It's about an assessment Absolutely protocol. Not, not it's an assessment protocol you could use even if you weren't using the instrument. Yeah, I'm just looking around here that if I'd been more prepared and hadn't just dashed from lunch, um, I, there are two textbooks, um, uh, uh, version one and version two, which. Um, very much detail the the methodology and how to do it and and one of the criticisms i really enjoy about activator is it's uh, it's being termed a cookbook chiropractic um and i don't know any cordon bleu chefs who came out the womb knowing how to fry an omelet or knowing how to make a perfect souffle you need to be trained and if you Mm. end up having recipes and written protocols it's super super useful it actually makes it very reproducible and only yesterday in my with my associates and our we do a weekly uh, uh, technique and review training thing um we let I'm not sure. Let's go back to the textbook. What does the textbook say? Um, which has been revi- say, revised and updated. Um, so we have a, a method that has, I think at last count, 217 adjustment possibilities in it. So it, it, it incl- it's, it's, whole, it's whole body. So, but yes, ask me another question on that <laughs> well, what is your assessment protocol for patients then? Because I understand that he's... Yeah. So so my new client coming in, I have developed um, um, a, 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 an initial workup that we go through. So we, we take a... Uh, I've got a six-page history form. Then we'll sit down and, and interview them for... Um, 20 minutes or so and actually you know find out what's just talk to them just talk to them listen to them um and then i run through a a, a, an orthopedic neurological um and some chiropractic evaluation that is i have to say that is unique to to my clinic because i've taken i've stolen loads of stuff over loads of years and put it together in in one thing that that is then going to um allow me to figure out where we go and what we need to do part of that protocol is a run through what's called the activator essential scan in the original textbook it refers to it as the basic scan and that is going to look at um uh, the knee the ankles knees pelvis L- number five four two t twelve eight six four one cervical seven cervical five cervical one um two and occiput because as we know those are the things that if there's going to be an issue those are the ones that come up most of the time um, be it a fixation or a subluxation however you, or a restriction however you want to phrase that and that then gives us as an idea um, then each time the client is coming in it starts with the patient is lying prone and we do what's called a six point landing check so it, it's in, in effect of it's a, a functional leg length inequality check is one leg shorter than the other now as we all know everybody or well, the vast majority of people have a, a leg short somewhere between naught and five millimeters 
Um, clinically significant for me, and because I was taught by Americans and uh, being a bit older and uh, English, uh, they all, everything is done in, in inches. So anything beyond a quarter of an inch, 12 millimetres, is, uh, set, sorry, seven millimetres is, is significant. By the time you're getting into half or one inch leg length inequality, um, it's how that changes as you go through the process. And I, I'm quite happy. One of the nice things about activating, if I have um, um, a client's uh, sibling or somebody watching, um, I, they will see that leg length change. It, it, if you get it right, it will literally change in front of your face uh, and you can see that movement because you're examining um, functional neural pathways. Now, okay, if they have an actual anatomical short leg, and then, then you have uh, the issue. But then in that case, if they were wearing, say, um, if they hid implants in their in their shoes, keep them in. And, and then you because you're looking for that that change. You're looking to change. It, it often feels my job is I, I'm a bit like being a piano tuner uh, and I'm, I'm hitting a, a reference note and I'm looking to see if the frequency is above or below that and then doing something to bring it into line with that frequency. Okay. So, so, so I think your, your first appointment then is going to take you the better part of 45 minutes with a patient? Um, in terms of the client being in and out of the building, it's probably more like an hour, to be honest. Right. Um, what my, about your follow-ups? Um, well, that depends on what we're doing. It's a great question. Um, so our, uh, as we call it, our client voyage, if, if I tell you, the, the one that happens the most, so... You know, everybody is an individual, but they do fall into certain categories, probably because we also um, for six years now, I've had a K laser. Hopefully you've heard yes. of K laser. Yeah. We've, had them on, we've had them on the show. Yeah, fantastic. Have you had Stephen, Stephen Barabas? Yes. Yeah. So Steve's a great guy. And uh, yeah, he uh, um, so we use the laser and I've used it for long enough now to know it's, it's a fantastic tool and very useful. Um, and we use that in combination. So. The, the treatment protocol that we would do the most is over a period of four and a half months, this is, um, we would adjust um, um, usually twice a week um, and use the laser as well. So four things occurring at two visits. And we do that for a, uh, for a month and then reassess and re-report back on the findings based on the first assessment. Then I would, uh, then we uh, adjust once a weekly and I usually bring in soft tissue therapy or massage at that point. Um, and we will run that for a six week period uh, and then reassess. And then if everything is going well, which it does the majority of the time, drop down to uh, fortnightly and then start talking about wellness care and whether we go on to, um, for me, the evidence base and where I am certain is that um, checking and adjusting people on a six week schedule will be the minimum optimum to maintain the level you got them to after that course of care. If you need, if they if they wish to continue to improve, um, depending on um, what they want and what their goals are, if they want to run faster or jump higher or work more hours or whatever it is they may do, then uh, then fortnightly works. Personally, I get adjusted and checked every week because I want to be at a very high level of function. So, um, so yeah, so that would that would be the the probably the most common one we do currently for chronic cases i will extend that to five and a half or six months yeah for, yeah for, for if you're talking yeah a very uh, osteoarthritic multiple disc problems multiple health issues underlying it, it, it's a complicated situation and it, it anything any real real change um is going to take a combination of time and effort so yeah, interesting because, um, and we don't necessarily want to go, I don't think we've got time to go into this, but I think you told me you treat in an open plan format these days. I do, I do. Which, Which, um, so uh, currently my adjusting room downstairs has two couches in it, uh, which was a COVID thing because I can tell you they are exactly two metres apart. Um I am looking forward to uh, if we get beyond probably the, the uh, August into going back to uh, having three catches in there. Um, part of the protocol is is 
and uh, how we explain and educate clients, and again, this comes from unpublished research within Activator, uh, is that having the, the, the client lying down for as close to five minutes as we can get, the research said that uh, most of the effect starts at 30 seconds beyond five minutes, it doesn't make any difference. That actually having them lying prone takes um, gravity off all their load-bearing structures, which of course it does because they're lying down. So when you actually deliver the, the adjustment thrust, you will see an increased movement within the joint. They saw a bigger voltage measured up the spine and so a greater therapeutic effect. Um, so we educate our clients. They, they are happy to come in, sort themselves out, lie down on the couch. We've got music on in the room. And I am very careful with my language. One of the other, th the, always the concern, or one of the concerns is about, well, client confidentiality. Okay, well, when we do our, re if I've got anything private to talk about, we have our reassessments and our re-reports on session eight, nine, 16, and 17, and, uh, and, then, and then every eight and nine, every eight and nine from there on. And if we need to sit down, and also we tell the clients, if you, you know, if you need to tell something, Julian, something you don't want anybody else to hear, just let us know and we'll, we can go dive into another room um, or I'll phone them or I'll f actually what happens quite a lot now is they will phone in advance and, and say, could you give me a call? It's just something I want to talk to. It will be something like they changed their medication. It will be something like they just wanted to let me know that um, um, their dog died last week. It will be something that they didn't want. But actually, if I'm talking about um, so. This morning, I was uh, with a lady who works in the NHS in a very high stress position, <clears throat> and I was talking about um, breathing exercises um, that can be really useful for um, getting as much blood away from your amygdala into your prefrontal cortex. Um, and the technique that I learned from that, <clears throat> I'm quite happy for everyone in the room to hear that. Excuse me. <clears throat> Because that's useful generic information. And as uh, uh, um, a technique that we use a lot is people are lit when they're not being talked to uh, and they are listening, they, they pay more attention. Um, mm. And so actually I use open plan as a, as a, as a very useful tool. So I, I, I said uh, this morning, I said, motion is lotion, rest is rust. You haven't heard that, you know, that, write that down. That's a great one. Motion is lotion, rest is rust. And the other lady on the couch, when I got to her, she said, I haven't heard you say that. Now, I know I've said that to her at least 10 times. <laughs> but this is the time when I wasn't with her that she chose to hear it, and, and, and it obviously resonated. Yeah. She said, that's great. I'm going to take that. So, I'm going to so, take a wild stab in the dark here, and uh, I'm guessing mm. you don't get your patients undressed. No, you're quite right. So um, one of the other... Um, I, I don't know if this is published or not, actually, within Activator, is you get more accurate. So the inter-examiner reliability is higher when clients are wearing their own shoes. So actually, um, I will keep them in, you know, uh, a, a, single layer of, a single layer of cloth on their own shoes. And if it's checking between me or me and my associates, this, the study um, was 10 chiropractors, 10 Activator chiropractors, more than 10 years experience and 100 100 clients everybody check everybody and see what the uh, uh the agreement figure was uh, i think the kappa score was about 70.72 so so 72 percent would agree when the clients had their own shoes now inter-examiner reliability in our world i'm sure you know this is mm. shockingly poor pretty yes. poor in in anything above 50 is considered good if not very good and uh, most yeah. of the time it's you know ask 10 experts and get 10 opinions so to have a, um, a, a Kappa score up there uh, is really good. So, so actually part of the protocol is, yes, client. And because, although I, my palpation skills are what they are after 20 years, um, and I'm looking for a, if I'm, if I'm testing for a subluxation at lumbar four, and it comes up with the protocol that's on the left, the right, superior, or it's a facet, or it's a lateral, and you, there are tests for all of those different, different levels, I, I don't need to actually see. I need to be able to find my way there. And in terms of, again, some unpublished data on, on, uh, that was done in Sweden when they were doing the does, does the activator move the bone? And they found in that case it was um, three jumpers and two duffel coats. And then the voltage level dropped. So, you know, anything less than that, and, uh, 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 and as you can imagine at the moment, most of the clients are coming in in shorts and T-shirt. Yeah. 
um, anything less than that. And if and then I can we have little adjusting boots. But I I tell them you know wear, wear a wear a pair of shoes. I'm get I'm very used to wear adjusting people in. Julian, that's really interesting stuff. Um, can I turn to some questions that are coming from our, our sure. audience here? Sure, sure. Imad has sent in a couple of questions. One uh, I'm really intrigued by. He asks if this can be used on uh, periphery, peripheral and axial joints. And, of course, at least two of the papers that um, act, the activator website refers to look at temporomandibular joints and yeah. in one case morton's neuroma although yeah. i have to say i'm not terribly impressed by that one on morton's neuroma not least because i can't find it anywhere in the published journals yeah they yeah. usually if, if anywhere they, they try to get them into jmpt but uh, yeah the the tmj one i do so the, the simple answer to the question is yes um, there is a, a a full arm sequence, a full leg sequence, a full jaw sequence, a full cranial sequence. Um, so there are uh, 217 current activator uh, uh, locations. They cross over with trigger points. They cross over with acupuncture points, as one might expect. Um, and yes, so um, typically I run through on, on each visit saying if I'm seeing somebody on a wellness care program, they come in um, on a six week basis. Um, I will ask them, is there any area of concern or issue? Run through the, uh, the basic scan. The aim and again, this uh, this is one of the things I love about Activator. The aim is to not need to adjust anything. Mm. Um and uh, uh, I learned this lesson a few years back, actually, from I'm going to give credit to this to my youngest daughter. She was about 13 at the time. Um, she'd been studying hard and um, uh, said she got a bit of a stiff neck. And I, those, at that time, I, I adjusted them. It was um, Sunday after dinner, um, after evening meal, every Sunday for about five years. I checked and adjusted uh, my kids. And. Um, I went through, I adjusted uh, Atlas. Um, she's always a, a right PD shot on the right, so I know I can tell you it was a, a right Atlas, lateral Atlas. And she got up from the couch and she said, Oh, that's a shame, Dad. Hopefully, next time it'll be nothing. I thought, Wow, you, you, you get what this is really about. So, back to the protocol. So, I'd run through the, the basic scan, do adjust as I find, and then focus in on any localized area. One, because I know of the anti-inflammatory um, response that it will have in the, in the tendons and uh, joint capsules and muscles, etc. And also, you, you, you want to ask the client, you know, what, what's, what's top of your list? What, what's bothering you right now? And they say, oh, I've got headaches or my shoulder is niggling me. Then you check a shoulder, you check a knee, you check an ankle. Uh, I think there are 23 tests for the ankle alone. 26 on a knee. Right. Okay. So the answer is yes. It's not just for... Uh, the for short sports. answer is yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, and one question which came in ages ago is how much is that activator five um in dollars i think there are about eighteen hundred dollars if and, and actually there is an issue with um um and it's a year it's it's a european thing at the moment actually they're really hard to get hold of at the moment because of the getting a th putting a thing or the battery on the plane so right. um, they are very hard. The Activator 4s come in. I have one as a, as a spare backup, and, uh, and I have an Activator 3, which is the rare beast I tend to use at home. Um, they come in around about seven, $800. Okay. I suppose you know, we're running out of time. Uh, a, a big question here is how do, how do people who want to find out more find out more? Saeed asked if there's an introductory course that people who are not chiropractors can attend. Yeah, that's, that is a great question. Um, so one of the things that uh, Activator Central in Phoenix did and have been doing um, for a good few years now, probably five years, is the entire postgraduate training for Activator can now run through a virtual training program. It's about the cost of a seminar. So I think it comes in around about $400 per month. And to be honest, a month would do it. It's more that, yeah, and then you can log off. Um, and I know that um, um, I have run um, osteomyologists uh, through that training program. Um, I spoke to Arlen Four, who is the main guy behind it, uh, and said, you know, how do I do this? He said, well, run them through the, uh, the Activator VT. Um, virtual training and and then you you can coach them on the practical stuff so so i have i have done that 
um, okay. lots of times. Um, it's what they want to know is um, probably the criteria for that are that you are insured and regulated with a governing body that you have done a, uh, a at some level you have done spinal um, manipulation um, mm. and uh, and yeah you're you you have insurance cover yeah okay um, well maybe if uh, afterwards if you can let me have some something I can send people as a link in case they want to follow that up that would be helpful Indeed, I have to say, in eight minutes, I'm back in clinic, but that will uh, that will happen at some point, Stephen. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, okay. Within that short space of time, she has asked a question, which I imagine all of us are interested to know. Can you demonstrate this thing in action? Yeah, indeed. Can I? I don't think it's going to be very dramatic, is it? Yeah. But... No, it isn't. Uh, it isn't at all. Um, I, I think what we need to do, Stephen, is is at some point we'll, we'll come back. And, and do another session. I, I you know, I, I can put, I can, uh, if I switch the tool on here, you can see, uh, I've got you on screen there, yep. it, it's, it, it's firing up, it's, it's pulling from the battery into the capacitor, I can switch between the settings there. Um, it's got a two pound preload on there, and you're not gonna see a lot of movement here, but uh, you might see yep. my finger moving there, you're definitely going to hear it. I do have somewhere a demonstration, a, a marble in a plastic jar, and you can make the marble jump about. Suffice to say, what I do know is if you're doing that thrust on uh, number four vertebra or uh, any of the lumbers, it is going to move that that bone in 1.8 millimeters. One point, it's going to move that bone 1.8 millimeters in exactly 10.4 milliseconds. And one of the differences was that you, you mentioned your reference earlier on the, the previous versions of uh, the spring loaded. They, from the studies uh, at the um, NIH trial, they realized that um, actually to improve the joint movement and improve some of the, um, the function, they were trying to get there as a perfect sine wave, that they were trying to get a sine wave of movement within tissue um, from a, a shock wave. Um, the previous version did it 74%. They wanted to get it higher, and the Active 85 was actually 94%. But to get it slower, you can't do it with a mechanical spring. You just can't engineer a spring that can deliver a thrust in less, in this case, less than 3.85 milliseconds. They mm. knew it needed to be 10.4. So the reason they went to the activator 5 was if you put a, um, it's a servo and a computer chip in there with charged by a capacitor that delivers that energy rapidly, you can just dial in the number you want, and they knew it was 10.4. What I've noticed is, uh, and this is... Um, treating fibromyalgia patients, stroke patients, people with underlying neurological issues, serious patholo neurological pathology, MS ones being a, another one as well. Um, the previous activator would, you had to be quite cautious on it, made them quite sore. With the activator five at that slower adjustment yeah. speed, and it's still way under the muscle stretch reflex at 20 milliseconds. Um, you don't get that. So actually adjusting fibromyalgia or stroke or uh, MS patients is a, is, a, is a joy. Okay, my final one then from Ian. Ian's asked whether you, whether you mix it up. Do you use this and diversified techniques or McTimony techniques? I occasionally, no, is the simple answer. We use, we use the laser, and I've got uh, a massage therapist working within the clinic, and I, I don't do the laser. People are trained to do the laser. Um, yeah. I, I've also done, uh, um, S I've done SOT chiropractic all the way through as well. I occasionally will use some blocking techniques because it's really good for, um, yes. for uh, almost instant relief of pain from, uh, from lumbar sciatic disc issues. But no, the thing uh, back in the in the 80s, Activator set up in Phoenix, uh, their big clinic there, um, a pure Activator. They wanted to know whether you could solely do Activator and still have a very successful outcome practice, and they did. And that, that practice was seeing 1,000 people a week. Um, so big Julian, we've come to the end of our time, and I know you can't mm. hang around because you've got patience any second. I now. have, I have, and I could go. Uh, I'm, I'm really for a I really hope that I really hope that our osteopathic audience uh, have yeah. been receptive to what you've said, even if they choose not to use the uh, the equipment, because that, that was fascinating. Even having looked through the papers that are on the yeah. Activator site, I found what you had to say actually quite reassuring about the protocol. And I'd very much like to get you in here in the studio at some time in the future, where we can Let's actually do, do a Let's bit do more detailed stuff. Absolutely, I'd love to do a demo. Brilliant. Thank you very much.